I'm gonna spend the next 50 hours buried alive in this coffin. Boy, seal me up! What you are about to see did not go as well as Mr. Beast's 50-hour stint in a coffin buried six feet underground. Rather, a pastor in South Africa resurrected a man from the dead. Well, just watch till the end and then judge for yourself. You'll hear not only from Alf Lukau, but also from the resurrected man's neighbors and employer. Alf Lukau, the pastor of Alleluia Ministries International in Johannesburg, South Africa, is well known for a variety of reasons including his extravagant lifestyle and dubious prophecies. I'm praying for you now. Yes. Amen, Papa. I am giving Eze till Wednesday to change his mind. Amen. Yes. By Friday, somebody else will present you money Amen. that is watching now. But faking the resurrection of a supposed dead man, as you will see shortly, elevates him to a level that only a few false prophets, such as Benny Hinn, have attained. And a man was raised from the dead on the platform. That's a fact. I was in Ghana recently, preaching one night. They brought a man. And this man was put uh, uh, on the platform. And he was dead. The man was dead. And uh, it was a very scary thing. Now, I saw his body being picked up you know, from hand to hand and to put him on the stage behind my back. The man was getting up and moving. Oh, my, oh, my. Do you literally believe that someone has been resurrected on the program? I have not seen it. In that one case, we did hear about it. Sadly, fraudulent preachers such as Alf Lukau bring much humiliation and embarrassment to the body of Christ. They portray Christianity as a fraud. We discussed how Lukau's fake prophecy led to a lady physically attacking another woman at his church in this video. I'm sorry, my To view that video, click the link in the description. If you are new to our channel, please subscribe and enable the bell icon to be notified when new weekly videos are posted. Assist us in spreading biblical truth. Thank you. What you see here is an alleged dead man in a coffin who was brought back to life by fake and misleading prophet Alf Lukau. He had apparently died and his body had been put in a mortuary. And here comes Alf Lukau. Notice how he carefully studies the coffin and summons the cameraman to have a better look at the deceased man inside. He places his hand on the presumed deceased guy and orders the casket to be removed from the hearse. If you look closely, you will realize that this dead man is still breathing. So, this young man died on Friday, and Alf Lukau resurrected him on Sunday. Is Alf mocking Jesus, who died and rose three days later? Tell me! Who's speaking? This is the neighbor, I'm the brother. Man of God. You are the brother? Yeah, I'm the brother. And you? I am the landlord. And you I'm are the, the landlord? I am the landlord for him, yes. Yes, he got sick. He got sick and sick, and then he started coughing a lot on Friday. Then we took him to the hospital, and then the doctor said, because he's got no papers, he can't, they can't Jesus. help him. Until we sent him to the surgery doctor. That is where he died in my head. Where did you keep the body? The body was on the mortuary. Jesus. This body is coming from the mortuary? Yes. Is that? From the yes. The mortuary is coming. Woo! So, they took the body from the mortuary, and on their way to bury him, decided to bring him in a casket from the mortuary to Alf Lukau's church, but this allegedly dead guy could still breathe. In any case, Lukau goes on to resurrect the dead guy known as Elliot, and you will soon find out that his real name is not Elliot. <laughs> is commanding life. Rise up! Yes. Come on! Rise up! Come on! Of course, the coffin is empty because no real dead person was there to begin with. 
One might ask, why do millions of people flock to false prophets like Alf Lukau when it's obvious that their miracles are fake? Deception and desperation are two words that come to mind. There will be deceiving false prophets as long as people are desperate for miracles. Hosea 4 verse 6 forewarns that God's people will die due to a lack of knowledge. Remember that God is more concerned with your redemption than with your material needs. Even if all of your needs and difficulties are not addressed on earth, you will have all you need in heaven. Have faith in Jesus. Those who blindly follow this phony preacher, even when his false miracles are obvious, should be aware that they are being exploited by this agent of Satan dressed as a gospel preacher. These are the type of people Jesus will tell, Depart from me, for I never knew you, if they don't repent while there is still time. Lord, Lord, they say, did, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? They talk about these wonders. They, they don't talk about, did we not repent in your name? Did we not obey in your name? Three times in verse 22, in your name, in your name, in your name. You can throw the name of Jesus around all you want. You can sing it 50 times in one song. It's coming. It's coming. And like the charismatics Jesus must have had in mind in the future, including today, they think the proof that they are His is in their prophecies, their exorcisms, and their miracles. Did they really do them? Of course not. Of course not. You have to debate that? The Lord says, I don't even know you. He doesn't empower people who aren't even in His kingdom to do miracles to cast out Satan or, or to reveal his truth through prophecy. These are fake claims, false claims. They sound like modern-day charismatics. We prophesy. We cast out demons. We do miracles. But they have no relationship to God whatsoever. Their eternal destiny, they think, is basically affirmed by these fraudulent signs. Hell is going to be filled with people, sadly, who were involved in this prophesying, exercising demons and doing miracles. Following Elliot's staged resurrection, a news reporter followed up with Elliot's previous employer, and we are not surprised by what he said. We understand that uh, his real name, in fact, is Brighton Moyo, and he is a Zimbabwean national and, in fact, was working in this timber company. Now, to give us more detail around that, I am joined by his employer. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Give us a brief history about what you know about Brighton. He was a very nice guy, and he came here about six months ago to learn the woodworking industry. And he was very willing and very able. But he was always very smartly dressed, and, but he worked well and he was a nice guy. And it was an absolute shock to see him in the video and to recognize him with his mouth wide open. Well, we uh, suspended him a couple of weeks ago for missing a Monday and coming late on a Tuesday. And he was suspended with full pay, but he never came back. And we wondered what happened to him. And one of these friends uh, brought a video into the office and told us that Brighton had died. And I love my employees. We've got 50 guys here. And to know that one of them had died, I was shocked. And when I went to look at the video, and I saw him lying in the coffin, and I saw his mouth moving, I said, he's not dead. And then we, we saw him breathing, and then we saw him come to life, and those eyes looking all around, it was crazy. So uh, it, it, was, it was really, it was a big joke. This was obviously not the first time the purported dead man had engaged in phony healing. The dead guy, whose real name is Brighton Moyo, attempted to recruit others to join him in the fake miracles, according to his former employer. From what I hear from my staff, he was trying to get people to come and do the act with him. So I believe he has done a stunt in the wheelchair where he got up and he walked away. And he tried to, what do you say, solicit some of the people that work for me to come and do the shows with him. So it, it's, it's an ongoing thing. When Elliot's neighbors found out about the phony resurrection, they were astounded as well. It's all lies. This never happened. These pastors just want our money. This is wrong. Our children are totally lost. We had people eating snakes, and now they're raising people. This is ridiculous. He never died. He was also never sick. His wife once recruited me to go and act at the church. They especially want people who can speak English. And there is an incentive. 
If you act your part well, they'll give you 1,500 rand or just a thousand rand for your silence. This is indeed sad when everyone knows that this pastor is fake, yet people continue to flock around him. We are burdened by these people who are seeking answers in the wrong places. Holy Spirit, please lead them to truth. Your word is truth. Turn the heart of these false prophets instill fear of God in their hearts and remind them that your judgment awaits them if they do not repent. Amen.